Director, it's on? It looks like it's on. Okay, then I, if, with your permission, may I move over the two presenters? Yes, please do. Okay. And then whoever is presenting, please raise your hand, unmute yourself, and let me know so I can give you the. Um, yep, this is Andrew Thompson. Uh, can you hear me? I hear you. Yes. So now okay. I'm and do you oh, know how to, I, how to do the video from here? Oh, I stopped video. Okay, there you go. Oh, wait, I didn't give it to you. I gave it to someone else. Let me move it again. Okay, there you go, Andrew. Now you can share your screen, sir. Screen, sir. Um, before we start, um, Vicki, would you like to announce the name of the meeting and the date, etc.? Yes, I will. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the Landmarks the Preservation Committee for Community Board 1. Our chair, Jason Friedman, um, is either joining us later or I, Vicki Cameron, his co-chair, will be taking over for tonight's presentations. Uh, so we can now move on with, uh, is it 17 Battery Place? We're ready for you. 17 Battery, correct, thank you. Thank you, sorry about the place. No, it's okay, I'm perfectly okay. Um, okay, I, do, you, you have, do you have this uploaded or the presentation? Um, Lucy, do we, Lucy, do we have the presentation or can you share your screen and take us through it? I, yeah, I don't have my problem is my, my, one of my guys has it on his and he's having trouble signing in. Okay. So that's problem. Yeah. Lucy, can we help? Lucy. I'm looking for it. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. I had told them. No, to no, prepare. don't worry. No problem. So yeah, my, 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 sorry, Lucy, like I said, Brian's having trouble tying in for some reason. Don't worry. This technology is amazing. Okay. I know. <laughs> some, sometimes I, I, even I get frustrated with it. It doesn't always work right. 100% for me. Okay. I think I'm sharing it now, right? Yeah, yep. I'm trying to see it. Okay. Now I don't know how to mute myself on the other end. Okay, so I'll stay quiet, but you guys can. I guess Are you able to can... blow it up any at all, Lucy? And I'll have to ask you to zoom through for me. Yeah, there we go. That's great. That's good. That's good. Thank you very much, Lucy, for your help. Um, okay, so um, I'll just uh, start the conversation. And thank you very much for this opportunity for having me on tonight and going through this, uh, what we like to do at 17 Battery. Um, I'll do the best job I can explaining it. My name is Andrew Thompson. I work for A Squared Architects. I'm the architect that's presenting this to you today. And uh, the extent of this project is that we're trying to upgrade some exterior entrances to the building. And what you see on the photograph of the building below uh, me here is that on the far left, we are, have. Are you hold on, Andrew? Uh, the, is, can you turn off this rearranged videos in the stage, so we can see the screen clearly? What am I doing? I'm sorry. Um, you see this um, app or something rearranging videos in the stage? Can you not see it? It's blocking my view anyway. Is it blocking anyone else's? You know, mine's okay. It's just not blowing up fully, but it's there. It was me. Don't worry. Something said got it. Okay, I press got it. Sorry. I, about I, that. I, I think I had that same problem. I just kept clicking. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. I apologize. Please proceed. Okay. Um. Yeah. So this is 17 battery, and there's basically uh, four locations on the facade of the building that we're looking to add to the building or make changes. And the uh, first one, which is on the left, I'll go. You'll see it in more detail a little later. Is we're trying to install a handrail um, at the main entrance, and then the second to the right is there's a door going down to a basement area, a cellar area, and we're just trying to replace it with a new door. The third is on the retail side, and that's going into the main retail on the corner there, and then back around the corner there, you'll see a little red uh, um, triangle. I mean, uh, um, sorry, let me know when you want me to. Yeah, I will. I definitely will. Oh, oh you were just talking yeah. about this page. Yeah, and so the, the, the fourth place is around the corner where we're trying to replace an entrance there. Um, and so just to give you a little history of 17 battery, 
they uh, not so long ago they redid their main lobby and they redid the whole entry with a new glass front that set, sits back a little bit. And then on the far right hand side there in the in that little nook of the building, they um, they they're currently putting in a brand new plaza in that area, public plaza, which I've walked. I didn't do it. I wasn't the architect for it or the um, landscape architect, but it looks really beautiful. It's going to look very nice. So part of this is that. Um, on the main entrance, they never uh, submitted for a handrail on the outside of the building, so they have a little bit of a hazard there people could fall over. So that's why I'm presenting it today. And then on the corner, they have a retail entry. And when you see the existing doors are there, you can see that it's going to make it tough for them to lease the space because the existing doors are, are not really very nice. And then the last thing is on the plaza. Again, same thing is that they have sliding doors there and they like to clean it up with just some regular glass doors out to the plaza again to make it look nice next to the new plaza. So let's move Excuse to the me. next. Yes, I please. Interrupt. I just want to tell that Jason Friedman is in attendees. He can take it and move to the panelists because he can't do anything where he is. Okay, give I'm going to stop sharing sorry. because I, and no, I'm sorry. It's just that I, I, I can't do it all with one thing, but I'll move them over. Thank you for letting me know. I couldn't see it. Okay, we'll make him a panelist. Let me see who else is there just in case we missed them. We have Roger as well. Okay, and um, that's it. So I'll share my screen again. Thank you. And I apologize. Thank you, Betty. And and for the people, I don't know if the people who just joined could hear me or not, but can I just do a quick, I'll just do a quick run over what I just said. We basically are talking about doing some exterior work on the facade of this building. It's mainly adding in uh, three new doors, replacing existing doors, and also a handrail for the new lobby that was done not so long ago. And um, the handrail wasn't included in the last filing, and they need it because it's a hazard for people to fall off the edge into the um, into a planter area. And then um, the plaza, which was just redone, it's they're working on it currently. They're trying to put some nicer doors going into the building at the side. They're currently sliding doors. So um, a lot of this is to beautify the exterior of the building um, and the retail, which is on the corner. Again, I'll show you the existing doors that are there, the sliding doors. And uh, we're trying to put something nicer in there to make the space uh, leasable for, the for a future tenant. Okay, so let's go to the next picture. The next picture just explains a little bit about the history of the building. Um, of course, this is one of the beautiful buildings on the, for, on the front skyline of New York City. I'm actually very proud that I get the opportunity to work on this building and with the uh, ownership of the building. I've been working with this building for years now and it's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, back, done back in uh, 1902, of course, the original building. So, and we did a little write up that you can look at later. And it's the next slide, please, Lisa. Thank you very much. And then I'm gonna roll to the next slide. And this this here just kind of shows the building um, that the building uh, in previous how it looked on the exterior. Um, the red uh, tr uh, square or uh, rectangles on the right there. That's one of the entries we're looking at doing. Um, it's it's not very visible as as to what was there, um, but um, I'll show you what we're proposing, which matches the new facade that was done for the main entrance to the building. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. And this again is just gonna show us from a site plan point of view. Uh, again, the facade of the building is to the right on this plan. And we have the planter there as the first rectangle. And then we have a door going downstairs and we have the doors upstairs going to the retail. And then the back, which is uh, the A400 symbol. That's the double sliding door that we would like to replace. Uh, next slide, please. So this first picture is actually showing the door that goes downstairs. So this goes to the lower level. And what ownership would like to do is take out the hollow metal doors that are currently there. They like to take out uh, the transom up above, which is just the concrete uh, piece. And uh, if you see in point number four there, they like to do gla double glass doors with a tra light transom up above to try to get some additional light down into the lower level there. Um, the dark bronze metal that we're showing there is what matches the new entry that was put onto the building for the main lobby of the building. So that, that's what we're planning to do down here, remove the existing hollow metal doors and try to make something that's a little more inviting to hopefully 
rent out in the future to the public and make it more usable space. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? This here is the plan and the elevation of what's there existing. So right now there's these double bifold doors with a glass transom up above. And beyond that, there's double pivot doors on the interior. So what we're trying to do is remove the double, um, the, what's in yellow here, these pivoting doors that are currently in front of, uh, on the front facade. Uh, next slide, please, because these are the photographs of it. Um, currently, just so you know, there's a, they're doing their local law 11 repairs on the building. And so we have a bridge that's in front of the building right now. So uh, excuse me for the slides. It's some of the best pictures I could get at the moment. But you see these double pivoting sliding glass doors, um, probably not the original intent of the building. And you can see the glass that's up above the bill, uh, the trans glass transom. So the intent here is take these doors out, put doors in that uh, match what is already been uh, installed on the front facade and the metal that goes around it we're going to dock make it into a dark bronze and the glass transom up above we would keep as is okay next slide please <clears throat> thank and lisa you're doing great thank you so here is a uh, elevation of what we propose this is going to look like again we're keeping the glass transom we're keeping the metal around the around the surrounding we're just replacing it with double glass doors is what the intent is and again, the color will be changed to uh, dark bronze. Okay, next slide, please. And here is kind of an overall elevation of the building, which shows to the left um, how they redid the front facade. And we're just basically matching what was already just installed. And this was literally installed in the last uh, two years mm -hmm. it was put in. And when I say two years, it might actually have been a year. But because of COVID, I think things got a little slow there for a while. So, yeah. So, and then um, where you see 17 battery place in the elevation right in the center there, right below there is where the handrail is supposed to go. And I'll show you, it's just a glass rail, but I'll show it to you in later pictures, okay? Next slide, please. Um, one thing we have to do with this, because you can see where the glass pivoting doors are right now, they, there's literally no landing there. So we have to extend the landing out a little bit by putting a by putting a concrete block there to match the existing steps that are already there. So we have to extend that. And also too, it's from a code point of view that as you walk down, all the steps are supposed to equal themselves so people don't trip and fall. So we want to equal the existing steps that are there as well. So that's the intent of this right here. Next slide, please. So now I'm going back to the plaza area and there is currently there, the picture on the left shows what we're taking out, which is a sliding glass door. And to the right, what we like to do is put two double doors in, replace it from the sliding to double doors. And these, again, these doors will match what was just installed on the main entrance of the building. Next slide, please. And again, this is an elevation of it. To the left is in yellow is a door we're taking out. And you can see we're leaving the transom that's existing there that's just above and we're just taking out just the glass portion of the door and its surrounding to the right what we're proposing here is two glass doors with top and top and bottom metal rail metal rails um, which will be in a dark bronze to match the front and with uh, poles on the doors themselves next picture please i'm going to interrupt you for a second is mr thompson with you so i can move him over uh, I am Mr. Thompson. Two of them. I have someone on attendee as well. Okay, maybe you. Oh my, uh, my, uh, my. Excuse me. Excuse me. My, uh, my partner with me, Brian, is on the phone as well. He just joined us too. I, I added, I added Brian, but there's another Thompson on attendees. Vinton. Oh. Not, not with you. Okay, go ahead. Nope, I don't think so. But Brian's there, and that's great. I'm glad he's joining us. So um, here we have uh, the, uh, the, this facade of the building that goes onto the plaza. And like I said, um, if you get a chance to take a look, the plaza looks absolutely beautiful. They did a nice job with it. So again, we're trying to update these doors here so that um, it gives a better look and matches the rest of the entrances on the uh, building itself. So the yellow shows what we're taking out. 
Okay. And, um, and that, and that's, and then we're going to put in two new double doors in those locations. Okay. So, um, next will be, and I might have to skip a few here. Let's see what I have here. Um, go down one more. I'll come back to this. Oh, I'm sorry. These are the, uh, stay where you are, Lisa. Thank you very much. These are actually some of the details of the facade and the, and the framing and the type of glass and the door, the door profile and so forth. Um, all we did is that these are the same details that they used on the main facade when they replaced that. Okay. Um, going next, and again, this is uh, some sections of, again, the, uh, the doors and the, uh, that we're going to be putting in and the metal frames that's going to go around them. And then go to the next picture, please. So here is where I'm talking about the glass railing. You see the word planters there, and it's just between the two columns of the building. We actually have a, a kind of a breezeway through there. It's a little walkway. And so right now, th there's nothing protecting from people falling into the planters. So what we're proposing here, and you see to the picture to the right, is putting in a just a, um, a glass rail across the top there, and it's going to be a uh, dark and it's going to be a bronze color to match the facade of the building as well. And if you go to the next slide. So here is an, a plan to the left showing the rail. And then to the right, we have an elevation and we have some details. It's, uh, I, I mean, I just call it it's a simple glass rail. So it's not going to obstruct the view or anything like that. It's just a uh, majority of it's there for protection of people. Okay. So those are the, uh, the basically the four things that we're requesting to do to the building to uh, just improve the uh, image of the building itself. And um, that's my presentation. So I'll turn it over to you to ask me any questions you might have. Thank you, Andrew. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, we, we're familiar with this because um, this building came to us, what, a year or two ago, asking about the um, renovations that you mentioned recently, as I recall. Um, so just before the rest of the committee comments, I just want to sort of clarify a couple of things. Um, um, about the vestibule, it, where you are removing the doors and you're keeping the glass transom above, um, is that creating kind of a weird area way where you get glass and then inside there's a hollow space? Uh, can you go back to that? I'm sure. I think that's, uh, let's say, um, mm -hmm. let's say A301. Yep, go back a little more. Keep going, Lisa. Thank you. Go on. It's Lucy. Lucy, I'm sorry, Lucy. It's okay. She's good. <laughs> Just speaking <laughs> on her behalf. Uh, if you guys don't think I get a little nervous at these things, I yeah, always please do. Please don't. Yeah, no, everyone does, believe me. Okay. So, uh, yes, that's great, Lucy. Thank you. So, you can see here, um, yes, these are the original doors, and you see there's a little, there's a little vestibule between the existing front doors and the uh, right. doors behind. So I would say the architecture reads as if this transom was a later addition, right? So why are you keeping this transom just sort of floating all by itself? Um, a great question. Uh, so I guess the intent here is that you have the vestibule behind, right? But the ceiling in the vestibule uh, is lower. It doesn't go all the way up, okay? So that transom allows light to shoot further into the space because there's a lower ceiling behind the behind the uh, cent center. No, I'm, I'm suggesting, Andrew, I'm suggesting to get rid of the transom and make that uh, a traditional opening as I could probably guess the original architect I had in mind. It, it would just be, you know, an opening flanked by columns or pilasters, whatever this is. So uh, it's a bit odd to keep this piece of glass there. And then you enter, you know, under it into a semi outdoor space. Um, I, I would. Uh... I, I would say this, um, it looks like if we go back to the T101 plans, okay, uh, and just so you know, I, 
I actually appreciate your comments. So it looks like it might have been there at one time. So we go back to kind of the historical pictures we have here. Keep going back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the picture on the right, it, it's, I know it's, we have to blow it up there, but it looks like it might have been there. It's, it's very tough to tell. But, um, but it on might the have right, been there. But, um, yeah, but well, I hear what you're no, saying. Because there's, there's doors below it, right? Or, or there's, yeah, it looks like there's yeah. doors below it. Right, so that's I, kind that of what we my, Yeah, we're, we're putting uh, doors would, still below it. Yeah. And we're keeping the transom up above. That's the intent. Well, no, you are removing the doors below it, keeping the transom. You pass through that, and then you enter the building, pass through the second set of doors, right? Um, we actually have a set of doors right there, and then a second set of doors. So the second set of doors oh, actually. You do? Yeah. I apologize yeah. then. No, oh, don't, please. I could have sworn you said you were. Yeah, no, it's, it's the doors and keeping the glass transom. I was like, okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I can see what you, you, you're thinking there. And yes, if we weren't putting in that second door, I could see a problem with what you're. What right, you're right. Which is right. why I was asking. Yeah. Um, you it, know, it's we on love a, this building. Pardon? Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. It's on A303. It kind of shows. Okay. But it's tough to see. Can I see small. a plan? Yeah. Yeah. So go to A303. Oh, uh, there, there we go. Yes. Ah, so the okay. plan to the left. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. yeah. And and the transom um will be in a new material that is different from the door frames below. So or is uh, there an overall reading of that uh, transom that comes down and then the doors are an inset? So the idea here is we keep the existing transom that's there and we're going to stain it. Uh, dark bronze okay. to match the frame uh -huh. and then inset the new doors. Right. You know, we love this building. It's a very important building. It's right at the end of the city. And we, we just want to be very careful about what the sonar is doing at the end of, uh, of this important uh, location. Um, may I ask anyone else from our committee who would like to go and make some comments, make, have questions. Roger, please go. I see your hand is up. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> thanks. Um, do, do you have any uh, uh, pictures of the existing doors, the original existing doors? Uh, are you talking about right now, today? Yeah. yeah. No, the yeah. historical. Oh, or, I'm sorry. No, I now? thought you meant yeah. the historical. Yeah, so if you go back one slide to A302. There we go. There, there they are now. And the Bible, when, when were the when were the when were those installed? They honestly, I don't know. Um, I asked that question, and nobody could give me the answer to. But they're not the original doors, right? I can't, I can't imagine they are, because um, it's relatively kind of new technology in a sense that they're automatic bifold doors. But you don't have any photos of historical reference of what was originally designed here. And I, I showed you what we found right now, and it's there's not like a clear shot that we could find. But there's not there's not plans of the original drawings showing the <clears throat> the original doors because one would imagine they were pretty grand doors. Um, right. So so there was one concern that, that we're not really we're just comparing uh, renovating inappropriate doors with you know arguably inappropriate doors. I, I you know I can't imagine yes. 1902. They had tran uh, clear clear doors. Um, secondly, you mentioned uh, having to extend the uh, the steps because of the <coughs> positioning of the doors. Um, what's the original uh, material for the steps? Uh, it's granite. And why are we using concrete then for the infill? Uh, no, we're using granite. You are so yeah, granite to match. Yes, yeah, says existing granite to match. Yes. Okay, sorry, I, thought I heard concrete. I beg your pardon. No, so, that's okay. So for me, uh, I'm just concerned that we're, you know, I understand the the the, the desire to have uh, clear glass doors for light purposes, but you know, this is as you say uh, a very important building, and I just wonder if we shouldn't ask the 
applicant to do some research into the original doors and consider what the impact of that would be. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. I do have to say that I'm in agreement. One of the reasons, you know, speaking out loud, mentioning how important this building is, is that incrementally it's being disassembled from its original intention. Uh, and we can't think of, of, of a terrific reason for it. So we would really like to see uh, th this is an important building. I'm sure there are lots of historical references, if not through the city, you know, through architecture books on what the elevation was uh, looking like at the conception of it. Uh, that that would really be helpful. Uh, as I said, just in my tenure in the last four years, we've um, seen this building twice and each time something is reduced. Gerald, would you like to go next? Yeah, and this is a, actually a very good um, sheet to start with. Uh, so my question is, um, between this on this sheet, I noticed that there are what appear to be maybe aluminum or stainless steel um, railings. And on, if we go to sheet A303, I believe there's a note four that states that the railings are being replaced. Um, do we, and, and I would have to zoom in, I'm, I'm looking at what was sent out um, and it appears that uh, have these have the new railings already already been approved? It looks like an LPC docket twenty two ten seven zero four. Is that correct? And do we have any? Um, wh what are the new railings going to be? Uh, so um, I believe you're right, Gerald. That they were, they were already approved um, at staff level, and they're to match exactly what was approved on the main entrance. So it's all going to match the same. And are those going to be bronze or are they going to be stainless steel? No, it's a, it's a dark bronze. It's a dark, um, uh, dark bronze metal finish. Okay. I just, uh, because the, um, bronze railing that, that you're proposing, I assume is going to match that other than the fact that it's glass. Correct. Okay. Very good. Um, so Gerald, this is not uh, bronze, right? It's just, um, a bronze finish. Right. Uh, well, I was talking about the railings. I, I believe those are right. That's what bronze. I mean. No, no, they're uh, just a bronze finish. Bronze so finish. there's okay. like further reduction in material quality. And, and the, um, you were talking about staining this transom. Is that, is the transom wood then? Is that what I understand or? No, it's a metal finish right now. Okay. So it's a, the transom, um, bar rather is is uh, what you're talking about recoloring to make it bronze i think so, yes yeah to match um, the rest of the building yes and give me i'm trying to go between the uh the sheets that i have the pdf that was sent over because i can see it better um jerry may i just ask you um so that's probably the aluminum right so if you refinish aluminum in this dark bronze, what is the longevity of that, um, that material change? Um, I, I, I quite frankly, I don't know what the warranty or the longevity is would be on it. So um, well, I'd, I'd, I'd add something. The warranty they'll give you, you know, three to five years. We would like this building to be here for another hundred <laughs> before you come back and ask for, <laughs> you know, um, peeling paint. Uh, and again, you know, destroying this very important building in the city. Sorry, Gerald, right. I didn't mean to interrupt. Thanks, Vicky. Um, yeah, so going, uh, I mean, going back to the sheet, uh, the historic photos, uh, I guess I would, I mean, looking at uh, the, the buildings of 1902, uh, it appears that these, uh, the entrance and possibly even the first floor windows would have been replaced. I would guess maybe 30s, 40s, 50s. They looked to be possibly some sort of an aluminum storefront with, with even some columns on either side of it. Um, I just don't know how appropriate it is without seeing the original original doors and I, I would say that maybe some more research oh. needs to be done. 
Very good point, Gerald. Very good. Because as I said earlier, this is an important building, and I'm sure there are, you know, drawings somewhere showing us. It would be very helpful, Anthony, if we could see what was the. This is an opportune moment uh, to do the right thing and do it for, you know, the next. 100 years, so it would be helpful if we could see what was originally intended by the original architect and then how far are we departing from that intention. And I don't want to get, um, there's, there's other, uh, alterations that are happening here and I just want to speak to those as well. The, um, the planter, uh, railing alteration, um, I, I'm, I'm not opposed yeah. to that. I actually. Uh, I prefer uh, when new materials are are being added, and I guess first off, the planner. It, it, this was originally a um, set of steps, and at some point, is, is that correct, or has this always? It appears that it may have been a an original entrance. Um. Yeah, it does appear to be that way from the uh, historical pictures we have in front of us. Hundred uh, percent. Again, it. When it changed and how, I'm not sure uh, what time period that happened because it's, as far as long as I've been working at the building, it's been that way. Sure. Well, and again, I, as far as uh, the glass is concerned, I, I actually don't oppose that because I do like the, I like newer fabrics to, um, you know, to, to uh, stand out so that, you know, when in the future, there's no question. Um, I, I think the, the brass railing across the top is, is very nice touch. You don't think it's a bit hotelish, like uh, you know how drawn I mean, the whole to planter, fall into a planter. <laughs> uh, you know, the whole planter is is what it is. So, I mean, yeah. we certainly can't have them go back to original stairs, which I think it was. But, but uh, yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Gerald. Um, thank how you, about Vicky. Betty? Betty, would you like to? You're welcome. Would you like to comment uh, uh, on this project? No, actually, I'm fine, but Jason has his hand up. Oh, okay. Jason. No, let that. That's okay. I'll go after. I'll go. I just wanted to echo what Roger said, which was, I think these guys should give a literal look for the original drawings. I mean, this is a magnificent building by very famous architects. There could be archives at Columbia. There could be, and that might give us a, a hint of what we're trying to go, what our goal should be for this new entry anyway yes okay no jason i agree with you and as i said earlier um each it, 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 with each small project right we are losing more and more of the fabric and i think that when work is being proposed we should take this opportunity to start from scratch from what was originally designed and then see how far we're deviating and then ask why. So I completely agree with you. I think we should put that in our uh, resolution. Um, Susan, would you like to um, have a comment? I'm sorry. Would you like to make a comment? No, I'm fine. I'm I'm listening. Okay. Although I'm okay. Thank you, Vera. I'm fine too. I was just. I feel like we've seen some historic photos before at another presentation um, of this building. I, yeah, but, yeah, we and had, I just the last was, time they came. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I don't know. Um, but it would be good to see historic photos. Um, yes, be very I, helpful I point of were, reference. We're gonna have a hard time making a decision on this without that. Uh, Cho, I, I would agree with uh, everyone and, and what Vera just said. Okay, great. Um, well, this is a resolution tonight, right? Yes, ma'am. I, I, right. Thank you, Lucy. I, I would suggest that, um, in order for us to have a fair shot at providing input, uh, on behalf of, 
you know, the community uh, and this building, it would be very helpful if you would uh, come back to us with some additional research uh, to show us what was originally designed and how far uh, this latest reiteration is taking us or how close it is um, personally based on the work that we approved only a year or two ago, uh, that, that in itself uh, has taken the building in a direction and perhaps this is a time to reevaluate uh, where we're heading. So um, I, I would ask if um, it would be possible for you to come back and see us next month with um, that revised additional information. Are we all on board with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Susan, yes. Let me get you the all November. Right. Let me get yes. you the November date, and then I'll come back. Vicky, if I may, one one other question: Has this been reviewed at staff level? Of course, yet? of course. Uh, it has, Andrew. Yeah, no, we didn't. We've been back and forth with them a few times until we came to you. Okay, and has there been any? Uh, Oh, yeah, so, we've had some conversations. I, I when I say we've been back and forth uh, for the past uh, 4 months, maybe 6 months. We've been going back and forth with staff yeah. level, just trying to get to this level. So, yeah. Yeah, can I just make a comment? This is a picky thing and maybe I'm of incorrect. Course. But there were some pages no, where, yeah, with the same site, same location was listed as east and west on the same page. So if you take a look at all those drawings, you're going to see of east and west written on the same drawings. You may want to straighten that out. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, there are some free Q and A. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, um, Lucy will provide you a date, and um, I hope Based you. I in the chat. It's Thursday, November tenth. Okay. Um, we're not sure if it's going to be in person or virtual, so. I will not be around, but someone in the office will contact you to attend the meeting. And I just checked my schedule. I am wide open, so I look forward <laughs> to that. Andrew, thank you so much. We know it's a big effort, but we really do appreciate it. This is a very important building in New York City and especially our community. I thank you very much for your time tonight. And I think it was Vicki, you have the new dog and that was actually <laughs> Did you see? I know my little new guy, Tucker. <laughs> oh gosh, he's so and, and you and you saved it. you saved him. So thank you. That's awesome. I did. I did. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope everyone have a Good wonderful night. evening. I'll see you in a month, and we'll revise some of the stuff and get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank bye you, bye. everybody. Lucy, what's our next thing? Um. I think it's an internal conversation, right? Yeah, actually, it was a capital makes sense. Everyone received the link. You should just input your information and unless you guys want to discuss items that you would like to have others input into the document. Is there anything that we would like to add? Uh, well, just uh, on a point of historical um, perspective, on these capital improvements, we always included uh, restoring uh, uh, roads with uh, cobblestones. I know there's been a lot of advanced conversation on this now, um, but I do feel that the restoration and in, 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 um, <clears throat> of cobblestones is something we should consider. I don't know if it's in there, but um, we used to have it in there for the last 20 odd years. <clears throat> yeah. I agree with you. I know it is my personal and professional opinion that cobblestones only become an issue when they're poorly installed. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Can I say that's not true? But can I go back to Jason? Because I was communicating with him with something that I put into the budget from the transportation okay. perspective about that very issue. Go ahead, please. Well, is Jason still on? It looks like oh. he isn't. No, he left. He was. He only came in. He said he was only going to come in for part of the meeting. Okay. Anyway, where we have are stuck on it is we have the group who want 
cobblestone, well, they're, they're actually welds and blocks, but please let me just call them cobblestones. I want the cobblestones that say the way they are. We also have the other side that came out through quality of life, talking about how dangerous it is and that they're slippery, they're uneven. So I went through the, what the name of the commission is. There's a historical commission in, they're based out of Brooklyn. Someone can help me there with the CDC. We're trying to, yeah, can't think of it now. Well, anyway, they did a, they did a big report in 2017 based around the Dumbo neighborhood and the cobblestones from there. They had the same problems that we're having in Tribeca, but in fact, uh, point to a lot of streets that are those in our district. They have multiple uh, recommendations that were made, very sophisticated because it included the DDC, the DOT, a whole bunch of historic people. It was just, just it was a very sophisticated report that was done. And they had seven recommendations. I took one of their recommendations, and that was that the DOT needs to establish the guidelines for what to do because it's been well established. They are not ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. And people keep saying they are, but they absolutely are not. And in fact, but they're not. I, I, who says they are? They're not ADA compliant. You can't be more than a quarter inch off. But this is for car like streets you know this isn't for pedestrian walking no they're for everybody is it yes it is and besides i can tell you i've had two scooters collapse because of crossing some of these streets so you have to be able to get out of a car and we've had people who've actually fallen and broken hips and have passed away in our district so to say that they can't go on the street yes, we remember that right the information no. isn't there so it seemed wise to go after the recommendation of this body to have the DOT start to look into recreating the guidelines. And I can tell you that as of this month, the uh, US Access Board is supposed to be putting out the US guidance on what's allowed according to the Americans with Disability Act regarding rights of way on streets. So, in fact, it's something that's going to have to be done because it's going to, there's a new lawsuit that was just filed again in the Bronx, but going after all of New York City about the lack of accessibility for people in wheelchairs, blind and otherwise. So, the city is also facing a new lawsuit telling them that they're going to have to make major changes on roads. So, I, I think, and Jason had looked at him and, and agreed with, with the thing that I entered. I can give a copy to people if they want. To see, it. to see it, but I think the smartest thing. I guess it's thing, a tough call, Betty. Right, but the only thing we can do right now is to try to create some historic district guidelines because they don't exist. And so the DOT has said they can't move forward because they don't have guidelines. Right, right. Well, we can work on the guidelines and it's a tough call. As I said, you know, there is in order to create a historical feeling or to maintain it, you know, there's some tools that have traditionally been used. Uh, now we have, uh, you know, additional concerns. And so uh, it's a tough call for our landmark committee. Um, if, if they need us to provide some input on these um, uh, decisions uh, or direction, I'm sure we'd be delighted to do that. Well, they would have to do that, but it, they won't unless they start the process. The item that I put in for the district budget was that they start the process. Oh, that's good. Okay, is there anything else for anyone else that would like to add to the budget? No? Um, I, I do, and Susan has her hand up, so if she would like to go first. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. No, please. Yeah. Oh, you're muted, Susan. Susan, are you going yes. first? I, uh, um, I just wanted to remind everybody, Laura Starr also has a, a report on the cobblestones that she has presented, and she's done a lot of work on it. So I don't want us to ever lose sight of that one either. That's all. Oh, terrific. Oh, no, that's terrific. I didn't know. That would be lovely to see if possible. But she says they're ADA compliant and they're not. 
Well, I guess I know, but you know, Betty, these are these are sorry, Susan, to interrupt. These are technical things that go beyond, uh, you know, the expertise of one or two people, and no we question. have to leave that to. Uh, no, that this is, you know, and and ADA is a federal act, so uh, it it is in Washington, and you know, uh, we can give our level of input, but again, there's only so much we can do at this level here. Uh, and if Laura is a landscape architect, so we do have to take that into consideration, um, and of course your concerns, um, Gerald. Did you want to add something? Yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna bypass the cobblestone. I've said my there on that in, in the past, but anyway, uh, the two things that I wanted to um, one one that I want to revisit in the capital budget was last year we talked about the uh, lighting at City Hall, which I believe is still unlit at the um, the fountain. Really? So yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, and and I believe that the note in there was that. Something about further, you know, information I, I was remember needed. It was, yeah, no, it was whether to keep them gas or L, uh, or LED. Well, it would be nice just to get them lit. They're unlit. <laughs> whether they're gas or anything else at this point, they just continue to remain remain unlit. So that would be a, a priority. And then the second thing is, um, Governor's Island and the posts. Uh, I don't know if anybody has followed up. Uh, I have seen that the um, LPC did have a hearing. Uh, they have stated that um, for at least Nolan Park and uh, Colonel's Row, losing the moonlighting and using updated classic tulip or AKA uh, acorn or other complementary style lighting on smaller poles. Uh, such what is as happening to your, Jerry? We can hardly hear you. What is happening to your? Oh no, one second, Vicki. One moment. It's okay. Have I switched over? Oh, yeah, that's much better. Thank you. Much better. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, to, to recap, uh, and I'm just reading some of um, some considerations that were sent to Chris Marte, uh, but also again that that um, LPC appears to have had a, uh, a hearing and there was good public testimony. Uh, but anyway, the point is um, for Nolan Park and uh, and and uh, Colonel's Row in particular. Um, some of the suggestions have been to uh, add some uh, smaller poles similar to what's in Central Park. Uh, anyway, basically, uh, I, I would suggest that we um, maybe add into this capital budget um, further uh, research into appropriate lighting for, for Governor's Island as opposed to these, uh, these poles. Something that keeps huh. in, in the context of the historic uh, district. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we are, after all, a landmark and preservation. Um, uh, Roger, you would obviously be able to give me some guidance. Is this something that we can put in the budget, or is this um, again like not in our purview of a small committee? And Betty, I'm coming to you. I see your hand up. No, I think I think that's absolutely right. I mean, these are these are these are maintenance issues around historic districts, and uh, you know, we we pushed a long way back for the crow's nest lamps and things like that. So, no, I, I think that's perfectly right. Okay. To All right. Terrific. Thank you so much, Betty. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm a budgeting freak. Uh, since I've been through multiple of these. Often it's check with Lucian first, and the reason I say that is most things on Governor's Island are denied, and the reason the OMB denies them is because they are not part of the New York City budgeting process. They are a separate entity with their own budgeting. So just clarify it with Lucian first. Interesting. Thank yes, you, of course, and that would be very important. Right, right. Bark at the right door. Right. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I guess at 6.52, we can adjourn the meeting.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Vicky. Okay. Thank you, Thanks, Vicky and Vicky. Tucker. Bye, Tucker. Everyone. We'll see you soon. Oh, Tucker, he's Good lying on his back. He's so cute. He's relaxing. <laughs> see, Thank you, everyone. See, did you put Thanks, the Lucy. sign in, in? In the chat, um, I, I have everyone oh. on this committee, so don't worry about it. Oh, good, thank you. Fabulous, I got you all covered. Too, Lucy. Thanks, bye bye. Thanks, okay. bye everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night.